Okay, so this is the second video for Unit 4. This is on aqueous solutions. Now, we just finished classifying chemical reactions, and while that is a really good start to talking about chemical reactions, the fact of the matter is most chemical reactions will happen in water. And so before we can really talk about what those reactions are or what they look like, um, it's just a really good idea to talk about uh, what an aqueous solution looks like. So we're going to talk about the properties of water that make it the most commonly used solvent, and then we're going to look at electrolytes and electrolytic properties. So this is what the outline for this discussion will be. Water covers about 70% of the Earth's surface, and I think we're something like 70% water as well, and so it tends to be um, important to talk about water both as a solvent itself and as a substance that allows chemical reactions to happen. Oops. Now water is a polar molecule. It has a dipole. Um, that means that the oxygen up here is going to pull electrons towards it from these two bonds, and it is going to take electrons away from the hydrogen. This is going to cause a partial negative and a partial positive charge on opposite ends of the molecule. That is going to um, allow polar and ionic compounds to dissolve. The terms that chemists always use is like dissolves like. So water, because it is polar, is going to dissolve polar molecules. Now, that means like if you've ever had um, oil and vinegar salad dressing or Italian salad dressing, which is basically the same thing, um, you can actually see in the store where the oil and the water have separated. And that's because oil, in addition to having a different density, is just not polar. And so because it isn't polar, it isn't soluble in water, and so they tend to split apart very fast. Um, now, polar molecules um, are going to be called uh, non-electrolytes. These don't break apart. Ionic molecules will break into ions in solution. And so you can end up seeing, um, for example, in solution um, that the polar molecule, something like sugar, is not going to be an electrolyte. It's not going to conduct electricity. There's no light from the light bulb. Um, and similarly, the ionic compounds, because they do break apart, will conduct electricity. And you see a light that can be uh, represented by this light bulb. Electricity will, con will flow through that solution. Now, it's always interesting to me um, because when we talk about electrolytes, we don't always represent um, in our heads what that really means. And so I wanted to talk about that for a second. Sodium chloride in water is going to break into its individual ions. So it splits into sodium and it splits into chlorine or chloride. Magnesium chloride is going to break into one magnesium ion and two chloride ions. It's a little bit different. There's three ions here instead of just the two. Now once you have these ions, you have charged substances that will allow um, the electrons from electricity to transmit throughout the solution. And you can kind of think about this in terms of um, things like uh, Gatorade or Powerade. These guys always talk about having electrolytes. And last year, or a year before, they had this commercial where they talked about specifically the electrolytes that were present in Powerade. Ion 4 because it has sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, um, which means you have a lot of salt in the, these solutions. That is really good if you are drinking this while you're working out. You're sweating, you're putting out salt, you might as well put some back in. That is a good thing. Um, the problem is usually um, if people drink it when they're not working out or when they're not um, 
actively losing salts, um, they can actually cause you to add more salt to your body than you need. You'll get thirsty, you drink more, you add more salt because you're drinking an electrolyte solution, you get more thirsty, you drink more. It's a interesting dynamic because you really only want to drink it um, when you are working out or when you are actively sweating and not just all the time, which is just something that's helpful. <clears throat> now, strong electrolytes are going to be those compounds that break apart completely. Um, we'll go here. Um, strong electrolytes are going to be compounds that are always soluble and ionic compounds that break apart very well. Um, with that in mind, um, we can usually test a solution to see if they are strong electrolytes. Oh my goodness. Because a strong electrolyte is going to conduct electricity very well. Here, a non-electrolyte does not conduct electricity, so you get no light from the light bulb. As soon as you add a weak electrolyte, these break apart partially, say like five out of a hundred molecules will split apart, you get a dim light forming. On the other hand, as soon as you add a strong electrolyte um, or something that is always soluble, you get a very strong light bulb, or a very strong light, there we go, and it means it's a strong electrolyte. Um, and you can keep going with different um, types of compounds. So here's another strong electrolyte. So weak electrolytes, only a small percentage. Usually it's something like 5% will break apart. Non-electrolytes, none of them break apart. And strong electrolytes, all 100% of the molecules that are there will break into ions. Now, guys, um, this really is going to depend on the solubility rules. Um, you can't see my source here. So this is Angie uh, Sadif with electrolytes, and it's just a YouTube license video. Um, hopefully you got the URL when we clicked it. Um, in the next video of this unit, we talk about solubility rules. Um, and that is going to be used to really bring this back to um, helping us determine what an electrolyte is. That is it for this unit. Um, we will continue with the other sections.